Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Your son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. When they, the apostles, had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you shall restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods the Father has set up by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come on the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the rooms upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 68, read responsibly. Let God arise, and let enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be mercy, merry and very joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the night who rides the clouds. I am is that name, rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God, you restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it, in your, your goodness, O God. You have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe God to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. A reading from Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. <clears throat> Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, children. It's good to see you on this day, even if it's cyber seeing you. But I want to call up to your attention what you heard in today's first reading. And that is the story of Jesus and his ascension, where the disciples had gathered at the mount called Olivet, And Jesus gave them final instructions. And after he gave them final instructions, the Holy Spirit lifted Jesus up into the air and took him up into the sky so that the gift of the Holy Spirit could be sent after he had ascended. Now, you can imagine what that must have been like. The disciples gathered together on Olivet, and they're all looking up into the sky. But then, all of a sudden, come two men who are dressed in white, and they say to the disciples, why are you looking straight up? Jesus, who went up into heaven, is going to come back again in a similar way. But in the meantime, you get to be my witnesses to God's love through Jesus for the whole wide world. That's another way of saying that we can keep our eyes on Jesus in ways there we can see Jesus' face and share God's love with everybody that we meet. That's how we are called to be witnesses. So, with that in mind, I have a little song to teach you. The words go, Lord, fill my life with you alone. Empty myself of all that's my own. Lord, fill my life with you alone. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Now here's where you can be a part of the song. How many of you know what it's like to stand like Superman? You go like this, right? Help me stand for what's right. And then when I sing, help me walk, I want you to pretend like you're marching. Help me walk in the light. And here's the best part of all. When I sing, help me run, help me run for the prize, you get to run in place real fast. And then we keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. And then we remember how it is that God shows us in so many ways where we can see Jesus. And God trains our eyes on those people that he sends us to serve. So, let's give it a whirl, gang, okay? Remember, when you stand, it's this way. And when you march, when you're walking, and then you run in place real fast. And if any of your parents are inclined to take any video footage of this while they're doing that, wouldn't that be wonderful to see on Facebook? Just an idea. (laughs) 
Lord, fill my life with you alone. Empty myself of all that's my own. Lord, fill my life with you alone. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Here we go. Help me stand. Help me stand for what's right. Help me walk. Help me walk in the light. Help me run. Help me run for the prize. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Lord, fill my life with you alone. Empty myself of all that's my own. Lord, fill my life with you alone. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Jesus, keep my eyes on you. Let's bow our heads, fold our hands, and let's talk to Jesus. Jesus, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to see your presence and your love in the faces of our neighbors. Help us to stand for what's right. Help us to walk in your light. And help us to run for the prize. Keep our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, children. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Americans are an impatient people. Unless there be any misunderstanding, I am also one of those impatient people. We want what we want, when we want it, yesterday. We aren't particularly process-driven. We tend, as a people, to be short on attention and long on demand. So this moment in time sets us up for a whole confluence of emotion. We feel hope, despair, and a goodly dose at times of irritation, even anger, as we look to the immediate future. The fact that we can see something that looks like an easement on social distancing and other restrictions serves to ramp up our impatience. Step up the action, we might be inclined to say. Let's get going. What's next? Can we? Should we? Of all the aspects of our living, our faith practices are among the most dear. With imposed distancing from family as being at the top of everyone's list of what we've missed the most, maybe second or third, perhaps, on that same list, is weekly worship. There are so many layers to our Sunday morning practice. Coffee social, there's a reason that Lutherans call coffee hour the third sacrament. Sunday school, the weekly kibitzing with friends, all important and all dearly missed. But worship, gathering in the Advent sanctuary, singing hymns, hearing the word, sharing in Holy Communion, that's the main event. And now that we've finally arrived at this moment when small groups are given a measure of latitude as long as we abide by the rules of safe distancing, it's hard not to push against that limiting vision of practice. It's hard for us not to keep from pushing ourselves into what we perceive to be normal. The words of the psalmist, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, have never been truer. How long, O Lord? The apostles gathered on the mount called Olivet, and they were certainly thinking it, if not saying it. 
And they did muster up the courage to ask Jesus in so many words, is now the time? Is now the time you will restore Israel to its former glory? The focus of longing is different, but the sentiment is spot on. For Jesus' followers, this gathering represented the culmination of three years of following him, of discipleship. Three years of hearing the kingdom of God is at hand. Three years of seeing the evidence of the nearness of this kingdom. Sight restored to the blind, deaf ears opened, release of the captive, and God's favor as evidenced in the light for the sake of all the nations. So with all of that, seeing, hearing, witnessing, you can imagine this group looking about as Jesus gave final instructions before his leave taking and finally putting their feelings into words. Lord, is now the time that you will restore Israel to its former glory? Well, the answer given is so far away from what the apostles had expected. At the very least, they were looking for a timeline. Tomorrow? Will it be next week? All has been fulfilled, after all. And what they end up getting is, or feels like, a whole lot of nothing. It's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, Jesus says. Pretty unsatisfying, I might say. You mean we have to wait even longer? You mean we have something more by way of time to endure? Well, yes, it is unsatisfying, but it doesn't stay there. There's more. You won't know the mind of God, Jesus seems to say, but in the meantime, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And moreover, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. In fact, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. What the apostles wanted was an idealized return to Israel's former glory days, but what they got was much, much more. A mission field, good news that was for everyone. A church, a community of faith breathed into life by the promised Holy Spirit with enough power to send the gospel into every corner of the world. And most important of all, Jesus says, you will be my witnesses. You're still in the game. You will be commissioned to proclaim good news to all nations. And your spirit-driven witness reaches beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Well, that vision is still not completely emotionally satisfying to the apostles. If this moment on Olivet was like, let's make a deal, they got door number three when they really wanted the Israel of old behind door number one. And so, in that moment of Jesus' departure, they trained their eyes upward toward the heavens. And then two men in white suddenly appear and speak words of assurance. Why are you looking up? Jesus will come ba uh, back again. In the same way that you have seen him go, he will return. And Jesus did return. From on high, in the same way that he departed from them. And the evidence of it is in Pentecost fire. Holy Spirit descending and resting over each one and filling them with Jesus' promised power from on high. Indeed, the ultimate return from Jesus will come in some future day. And yet, Jesus returns in the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. You will be my witnesses. 
of all that we have pondered in these past two plus months of quarantine, have we considered this? The world is watching us. As much as our eyes have been searching the heavens for some sign of deliverance, the world has been watching us and likely in search of the very same thing, but looking for cues from us. So then that begs the question, what has been our witness to the world in this time of pandemic? If the world would write a review of our witness during this period, I suspect that it would be a mixed review Fear can push us in different directions. It can make us suspicious. And it can drive us as well, almost at one and the same time, toward compassion. It really depends on what we're afraid of. If our fear is rooted in self-preservation, and let's be honest about it, we all live in that reality, some days more so, some days less. But if, more often than not, fear drives us to think and to act in ways that cause us to guard our lives at all cost, who are we leaving behind? Put it another way, are we running away from the weakest and the most vulnerable? Are we so afraid of losing what we had that we will run toward everything that will preserve the status quo? Or, in our witness, do we run toward the weak, the vulnerable, the sick, and the dying? In that today's mission field, to which we are called is a mission field of witness where our, risen, our witness to the risen Christ can in fact bring comfort and grace in the midst of so much brokenness, do we run toward that? And will the power of the Holy Spirit be seen in everything that we say and do? I believe that God has changed us through this pandemic. I do not believe that God brought this upon us as some sort of corrective or punishment, but we can witness to the sufficiency of God's grace. Instead of looking up, the risen Christ moves us to look for his return in the lives of those whom we are called to serve, and that is where we will see him. This weekend... We remember those who gave their lives in service to our country. We remember them with thanksgiving. They died to protect our freedom. My prayer this day, and I hope that it is your prayer too, is that we do not confuse freedom with license to do what we want at any cost. We are perfectly free and we are free to be the least of all and the servant of all. That is true freedom. And may we also be attuned to freedom that we witness to it with acts of love and mercy. We may not be yet where we want to be, but by God's grace, we will always be where Christ wants us to be. Amen. Healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, your people, you call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, your breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists, medical researchers, 
doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, and all who are on the front line of caring for the sick and dying. Lord, in your mercy, make your justice known among the nations of the earth, protect the vulnerable, redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that they may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, we especially remember this day those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never-failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you always. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.